Hello, David Sretsky for The Bond Experience. I've got my hat, I've got my umbrella, I've got the Tower Bridge in the background. I must be in London, and today is when we're having the HMS Belfast Charity Gala. Yes, we're honoring John Glenn, but also we're getting together with a lot of friends, a lot of British Fan Club members from around the globe. You know what? Without further ado, let's go check out the festivities. All right, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, I mean, a perfect moment. Hopefully he get his lighter going. We've got Phil Dewist. How are you, my friend? Um, excited, energized. Right? Ready. Organized, wonderful chaos. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, well, now, first of all, what on earth are you wearing tonight? Well, everybody who knows me knows that Roger's my favorite and Spy Love Me's a great film. I love the midnight blue tuxedo he wears in the Cairo scenes. And Elliot and David Mason have very kindly, well, very kindly, made me, <laughs> made me the uh, the suit from that film, and that's what I'm wearing with the flares. Wow. Okay, we're gonna get some of that close-up flare later. And by the way, talk about a man with flair. Tonight's been, goodness, maybe six months in the making. Would you say? Yeah. And today it all comes together. Today it all comes together. Four hours a day for six months. Many moving parts. Not just me. Some other people have done things as well, lots of things. And the whole community, well, the people I know in the community, they've come together to help UNICEF, to help us all celebrate it and to have fun. It's going to be nothing but fun. So without further ado, let's head to the ship. The room is obviously an, a World War II battleship. So I'm telling you right now, we're in tight, we're close. Did I get too close for comfort? Um, but you're going to love it. The whole experience is just, I'm going to cry. I know I'm going to cry. I'm going to tell you that right now. Gosh, I hope so. Because uh, the, all of us who've organized it, we've spilled our hearts into this. And all the people who bought the ticket, I think they've spilled their hearts into it too. And so there's not going to be a dry eye in the house tonight. It's going to be emotional. Hi, hon. Oh, hello. You ready for tonight? As, as ready as we can be. Miles, <laughs> doing the thing. Here we go. I'm entirely sure where we're going. Um, what do you think, Mr. President? Mr. President? Yeah, it's a big <laughs> pleasure to be there today. Uh, I think uh, you will remember this day all your life. I think so, too. Yeah. The big one. Final yeah, definitely. Here we are. Absolutely. Marcus Hartman from Switzerland. Hello. Come all this way. He's lost. Are we already lost. <laughs> yes. here, um, held it safe here. You can't have it on the deck. So we brought it into a private room. And so these are all the brands that have donated or sponsored to support UNICEF and to support the club. So people will be able to come onto the red carpet. And we have Catherine Sinclair, who's going to do an interview with anybody who wants it. Photos, we've got a photographer. It's going to just make people feel like they're in Hollywood. So this, and this Phil, will, this will, Phil this, what is this room? This is the Fleming Bar. So we'll have 1940s music playing. There's some theming going on. There's some little props and cute people can come down here. And they can sit down and they can have a photo. And oh my goodness, the start of Casino Royale. <laughs> and that's, in a, that's from the 1930s, that. So this is, you'll be able to get more, more, uh, more vitos, martinis, gin and tonics. Whatever you would like. Sorry. Absolutely amazing ship, and it just goes on and on and on. So let's us go on. Then this is the ship's company dining hall, where we will have our gala dinner. And we have gone for traditional military style seating with long tables, just as they would have done it in wow. the war. Oh, I love uh, how cool it is in here. We, we also, 
We also have over here a station for the auctioneer for the UNICEF auctions. Everybody has their issue number one of keeping the British end up on their seats. And then Mr. David Zerisky himself will be interviewing the panel from our stage, which is health and safety approved because it can't be more than uh, half an inch high. So missiles are okay, torpedoes are okay, rugs, eh, meh, 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 okay, meh. Okay. okay. So we have so these the, tact are... the tactical outfit from Living Daylights. Alan Stevenson very kindly has brought these items. We've got a Maud Adams Octopussy Rope sign. Oh. We have BB Dolls ski suit, which I absolutely love. I would wear that. Marcus I mean, is going like, to take that. It's like an Elvis suit. And then we have a valet from a future kill. So John Glenn Films represented very nicely. This ship has everything. Even cue the music. Okay, I am here with Luc, the president of the James Bond French Club, and of course, I'm here with Marcus of the Swiss James Bond Fan Club. Gentlemen, what is it like to not have to plan an event and to watch everything happen from the sidelines, but you get to enjoy it like this? Uh, the first emotion is, um, it's, it's the first uh, event of the British Club. That's right. Yeah, yeah. and so uh, it's always an emotion for uh, Marcus too, I think, to come for the first event and for the, for the first um, uh, uh, big emotion that we will have all together, that we have a new club in England. Yes. Okay, that was a, a nice proposition we've made to, to Barbara Broccoli. That's she right. said, yes, do a club in, in England, and today we are here one year later. It's perfect. You started this. You planted the seed with Barbara and said, why isn't there a James Bond British yeah. fan club? And here we are today standing on the HMS yeah. Belfast yeah, celebrating. She said, yes, that's incredible. We don't have a James Bond club. Do you want me to do it? Yes, please do it. I don't want to do it. Yeah. Of course, I have enough work to do with friends. But today, when I asked to, to Philip, to, to, to say, do your club, she's okay. You can go, 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 and he, he does it. Amazing. The French did something very positive. Yeah. What a we wonderful tried. thing. We yeah, tried. We, we tried. And the Swiss stood by and just watched. Yeah. It sounds well, very we, familiar. No, we gave some support because no, we were all in that in the same boat. Yes. If you want to say. Yeah. And uh, we were just discussing before. Uh, we know how it feels to building up an event. If you've yes. never done that, you know the pressure that is really happy to be here. And it's nice, we're representing our clubs, but we know how much work is involved building and up an event very, like that. It's very funny to see Philip running everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> generally, he runs, I run. Yes. <laughs> and now it's Philip. Phil will be able to relax Monday, yeah. after yeah. everything, after yeah. the weekend is over. But gentlemen, it's so wonderful, I have to tell you, just to watch so many people from the Swiss and the French fan club come here to yeah. London yeah. to support this group. Yeah. They're not saying like, oh, they're competition. Yeah. You're supporting them as one group. Is the vision for really there to be a unified global yeah. James Bond club? Yeah, I, I think uh, there is more than that, that tonight we are more than 14 and 15 countries, different countries. Oh my gosh. You, for example. Including the United States, States. my yeah. apologies. And uh, from people from the Canada, etc., yeah. etc. And that's... We enjoy that. Even and Canadians are here tonight? Yeah, yeah. only one. Well, that's enough. That's enough. <laughs> Listen, this is terrible. Detente <laughs> is what we want tonight. So nothing but peace. Gentlemen, I think it's time for a drink to oh, kick this yeah, thing yes. So let's head in for something cold. Sorry, David and Anthony, before 175 people ensue. <laughs> Tell me the theme. I'm, I'm sensing Sean Connery. Um, kind of, yeah. We, I think we unconsciously um, channel "Never Say Never Again," which is I watched for the first time. Which he seen. watched for the first time very recently. Did so you I have to say "Mark Safe" from "Never Say Never Again"? Are yeah, you okay? Yeah, yeah. He, he, you know what? He absolutely loved it. It's yeah. one of his favorite Bond films. So we, we're not planning to divorce anytime soon. Yeah. Wow. But um, yeah, the suit I think was kind of unconsciously. I didn't manage to get the exact periwinkle blue of the shirt, so I've gone with pink. Uh, whereas you've kind of gone for the Valerie. Leon, sort of I mean, it's bang on the color. Color sequence, yeah. yeah. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Are you happy that you gave birth to your husband? I was like, what is that? Oh, 
Thanks. Plug, if you'd love to hear some more in-depth interview material with John Glenn, do check out the club's YouTube channel where there is a fantastic interview that our club secretary, Emmeline, has done. Um, it's amazing to think that the club, in its form, has only been going for seven months. Uh, I think that's pretty amazing. And to think that we're now on one of London's most iconic, I was going to say landmarks, but we're not on a landmark. <laughs> but we're on the most iconic location in London. And I think, as locations go, I can't think of anywhere more fitting to spend this evening for the purpose that it is intended. I didn't prepare anything. Um, not because I'm not a prepared individual, I am a prepared individual. <laughs> Ask the board team. I, I'm constantly on it, and more than Simon is with the emails. <laughs> but I didn't prepare anything because I wanted the weight and the emotion of the moment to decide and dictate what I was going to say to you all. And I'm going to be perfectly honest with you, looking at you all, I am uh, I'm struggling for words, uh, which is not very... Uh, usual for me because I always have things to say. <laughs> uh, the first thing I want to say is that uh, I could not have done this without my wife Emily. Yeah. Yeah. You've tolerated just about everything you can get from me. <laughs> she's an aerospace engineer. She's a very qualified individual, and she's been asked to do very strange tasks. And then when I'm not communicating what they are supposed to be properly, because I'm in a rush, she's kind of frustrated. And I thank you so much for everything you've done. Um, the next big bunch of people I would like to uh, thank is the board team. That Some knew me, some didn't. But I gave you a vision and I said what we should, what I thought we should do, you perfected it and we've worked on it together and I love you all and thank you to every single one of you because you really have made all the difference. The next wonderful group are all of the Bond alumni that are here tonight to celebrate with us, to raise money for charity, to be with all of us, not because they pay, but because their hearts are huge and they are here with us as family, as friends. So I thank all of you. I can't list you all because there's so many of you, but I love you all and thank you for believing in the club and believing in UNICEF and the vision and what we were doing. So. I couldn't have done it without you again. Thank you. A very quick mention to my parents because I absolutely think they're fantastic and without them I really wouldn't have been here. But, um, That's real. That's real. And maybe that would have been better for some, but... Uh, John. Mr. John Glenn. You are British. You are an institution. You are a visionary. You're wonderful, and you did pigeons before John Wu did. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you. And I hope you're feeling the love in this room. And you can't cry, because I already have, so <laughs> you have to keep it together. <laughs> to ask John the questions that we all want to ask, I'm going to hand over to a very good friend of mine, uh, someone I'm very fortunate to call a friend, someone who has travelled very far to be here this evening, the one, the only, Mr. David Zariski of the Bond Experience. The Bond Experience. The Bond Experience. <laughs> <laughs> you get two likes. Yes, you do. All right. There you go. Sir. Thanks very much. All right. Well, first of all, um, welcome. If you are finding your seats, please take your seats because breakfast is about to be served. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. It's going on a little bit, but that's fine. It's we want this to last forever, but unfortunately, some of us have to go to sleep. Uh, John, thank you for being here tonight. Congratulations again. Wonderful. D David, thank you very much. And uh, thanks to everyone for being such a wonderful audience. And I really appreciate your dedication to the Bond films, of which I was very proud to have been associated with eight. <laughs> well, let's talk about that because, I mean, you've been associated with eight. You've obviously directed some of our favorite ones. Some like Octopussy, which are actually having a celebration this year, an anniversary, which is absolutely amazing. As you look out upon here, and we've had so many people ask you in interviews, 
you know, what have you done? How have you started your work? This is not that interview. I really want to pick your brain almost like Barbara Walters and get the emotion going a little bit. So when you look upon a sea of faces like this, knowing that this is a bit of a fantasy of ours, what does it do for you after all these years to feel that people still find your films so thrilling? Uh, surprise, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, normally most people I know, or a lot of the directors I've known, they, they do a few films and they disappear from sight. With the Bond films, you seem to go on forever. And some my films, you know, when they first came out, they were they were average, I suppose. But as time has gone on, they seem to become more famous. It's, it's an age thing. Is it something to do with the fact that modern films aren't quite as good as those? that were done yeah. it, it 40 be, years uh, ago? I don't know. Well, Bond never died in any of your films, so that <laughs> might have something to do with that. You need to strike that from the film. My apologies. Um, no, 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 but I think that's something to it because your films, we've talked about it tonight, your films have not only energy, not only the essence of Bond, they're fun. Yeah. They're escapism. Was How important was that as a director to really have the fun factor? Uh, well, there's a huge tr tradition um, uh, on the Bond films. I mean, I was fortunate the, the style had been established, and of course, Sean Connery was a fantastic Bond, uh, followed by George Lazenby, one. He wasn't so pop popular initially, but nowadays people look on that film. It was a very good film, by the way. It was very technically good. Uh, Peter Hunt, the director, did a fantastic job. Uh, he's an ex-editor to the like I was. And uh, then, of course, Roger came on the scene, and Roger was fun. I mean, every day was a joy to go to work. And anyone who, whatever job you do, if you get up in the morning and you can't wait to get to work, it's quite unusual, isn't it? Um, and that was the case with Roger. He was, he was joking around all the time. And I would have to allow an extra half an hour on the t schedule every day for Roger's jokes. <laughs> and it was worth it because it paid off handsomely. It kept everyone on top, you know. It took six months to shoot a, a Bond film. It's a long time to hold everyone together. Yeah. And you needed someone like Roger. So we actually tailored the, the scripts to suit Roger's um, style. Because no one, he wasn't a Sean Connery. I mean, you could believe that Sean would kill someone. You couldn't believe that Roger would kill anyone, could you? <laughs> so we, we, we wrote a lot of humor into the scripts. Uh, Octopussy is a prime example. And uh, Cubby Broccoli's eyebrows were raised when he read some of the stuff that I wrote in conjunction with Michael, like the circus scene, you know, with Roger, Roger in an ape suit in, the, in, <laughs> in disguise. And then, uh, then I said, Roger couldn't believe it when I said, you, you know, put the ape suit on. And uh, he was even more incredulous when I, I had said, yeah, we're going to dress you up as a clown. And we, he comes to face to face with his likeness in another clown. Uh, and, uh, but he, he, he accepted it, you know. He, he queried a couple of things, but he did accept it in yeah. the end. Well, let's talk about that because I think the acceptance, I mean, the Bond films, people talk about it as a family business. You had to obviously yes. work with the Broccoli's. It's still a family business today. With creative differences when you're introducing clowns and gorillas, <laughs> uh, what did you do when you, and if you ever did, clash with the family to say, I want this, but they want that? Well, I, th I think it's fair to say that Cubby Broccoli, he, he had the last word, but he, he had a wonderful way with people. And uh, he used to his eyebrows would raise like uh, like Rogers did when, when I came up one, one or two of my ideas. But he went along with it generally because he, he liked creative input. And uh, he was very supportive. But we used to sort all these problems out pre, pre-shooting. pre It wasn't while we were actually shooting that we'd have arguments. We'd have plenty of arguments when we were writing the script, believe me. Uh, some of the meetings were hilarious, you know. Uh, especially working with Richard Maybaum and he used to be a bit of an actor himself before he became a writer and uh, he would try if he was portraying a beautiful Greek princess it was always his wife uh, he, he always you know he would get he would try and uh, demonstrate the scene to us and he would get down on one knee and he'd throw his arms around 
and have us in fits of laughter, because, but he was quite serious, <laughs> and that was the funny part about it. <laughs> you know, so, uh, Roger is beloved. I mean, tonight we're doing this for UNICEF. It's a part of, I said this to somebody else uh, earlier, we're sort of quasi-extensions of Roger Moore as an ambassador, raising so much money, and you could still well, raise I money. Am. Well, you are. Yes. <laughs> well, members of your family. I had the down suit made with the flag. Yeah. I want to move on a little bit to Timothy Dalton, give him a lot of love, because like many of your films that have become increasingly popular, especially people looking for that escapism moment, Timothy Dalton's become more popular, and maybe there's a theory, like your opinion on it, that it's because Daniel Craig's popularity was a little bit more rough and tumble, and people weren't ready in the 80s for a rough and tumble Timothy Dalton. What's your point on that? I think you're absolutely right. I think that Timothy was probably the finest actor as such, Shakespearean actor. I mean, the last person you want to play J James Bond is a Shakespearean actor, quite honestly. <laughs> but, um, but Timothy was a fine actor, there's no doubt about it. And he did, his first film I did with him, Living Daylights, uh, I thought, I'm very proud of it. It was a very, very good film, I thought. And uh, Timothy didn't, funny enough, hit it in the United States for some reason. He, he wasn't as popular as Roger. Hmm. Maybe it was because he was, it was a hard act to follow, I don't know. But um, anyway, we only did two films with Timothy. And then there was a five-year hiatus. And then, they, of course, they brought in a new Bond. Um, but he was a forerunner to, to Craig. Right. Um, he was the same style, very serious actor, um, but you, you, I, I thought he worked very well. But uh, I think probably Roger's style, which I'm probably responsible for, because I, I never thought Rod, Roger could kill anyone, and uh, <laughs> therefore we, the, the, all the um, all the scripts were more light-hearted. You know, yes. a bit like the Saint, I suppose. He was very good in the Saint and. But what a lovely man he was to work with. Um, a pleasure every day to go to work. It really was. It's amazing. And we've heard all the great stories about that. With Living Daylights, in particular, it almost seems like a Roger film that happened to be starring Timothy Dalton. Was there a part of your creative process as a director that said, you know something, I, it's not Roger. I have to direct this person differently. And was there, was there a pivot point for you in doing that? I think that the pivot point was, in fact, when we first cast him, I was, we went to a meeting, uh, Cubby, and I'd suggested Timothy J Dalton um, before, and we, we invited Timothy along to Michael Wilson's house in, in Hampstead, and we had a, a sort of a talk about it, about the part, how it should be played, and we agreed that we needed to get, after Roger, we needed to get back to the basics of Bond, Fleming, be more serious because Timothy had had the ammunition to put it across on the screen. Uh, so that's what we were watching. We had the, Timothy's ability as an actor. So we tried to hone the scripts to be more dramatic. And uh, I suppose we wean people to the, make make Bond much more humorous. I mean, there's always been laconic kind of humor in Bond films. But it did vary in its intensity. Sometimes it was like Sean the one-liners, Rogers the one-liners to a certain degree. But ma mainly it was a, it was a question of the actor's ability, and therefore we honed the scripts to suit the actors basically. Right. There's um there's an old saying that creators need to create. They need to constantly be doing something. So you're here with us tonight. You've received a lifetime achievement award, but what a lifetime you have in front of you. What do you do on a daily basis to still create? You better ask my wife. I'm laughing. <laughs> She's laughing like crazy right yeah. now. Uh, she, she does most, most of the creative stuff now. <laughs> <laughs> she says. No, she's uh, much more agile than, uh, than I am. She's just recovering from cancer. But she's doing a fantastic job. And, uh, Don't, don't cry, dear. <laughs> don't cry. Uh, but she, she's very brave and she's put up a strong fight and she's well on the road to recovery. So uh, it's great. Then she can help me up and down the stairs. <laughs> I look forward to it. <laughs> well, they say creating a family dynamic is the best yeah. 
focus yeah. and best goal. And I want to I want to end this on this because John and I have to go to sleep. Not together, easy. <laughs> <laughs> Audience, um, but as a creator, you have created something that is so relevant, so indelible, and so permanent in our hearts and minds. And you know, people like Phil became emotional tonight because these films have touched us and continue to touch us. And we actually have sons and daughters in the room that continue to really take your legacy and extend it forward. And for that, and for everybody else, we want to thank you so much. You're very kind, thank you. Okay, so it is the day after. Uh, it is 6.20 a.m. in the morning. I went to sleep. I left that crazy party that you saw probably about three hours ago. Quickly took some shower, splashed my face, got about two and a half hours sleep, and here I am. I've got a very quick breakfast here at the Hilton, a little bit of coffee because guess what? I've got to go back to work, sort of, in the sense that we're going to be heading to the film and Comic-Con of England. Yes, this is the one that has about 100,000 people, lots of celebrities, and at 12 p.m. noon, I'm going to be interviewing uh, a slew of James Bond girls. Bond girls. Yeah, for kind of the anniversary of things, but guess what? That's a different video. I'm here to tell you. The evening was magnificent. There were, there were really, as you could tell, some very emotional, extremely authentic moments between individuals. And that's, that was the theme. Even though, of course, the theme was James Bond, it was John Glenn, it, it, it was wonderful magazines and, and, and food and the environment, the HMS Belfast, all of that had the trappings of James Bond. At the heart of it was people, as you heard. That was the gold. That was the equity of life. And as I've always said, the equity of life is not money, it's happiness. And last night really represented happiness. So I'll leave you to it. I hope you enjoyed this quick video. I've got to eat because again, more Bond experience is coming. In the meantime, this has been David Zaritsky for the Bond Experience and we will see you real soon. Take care. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from the Bond Experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest and greatest information plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you just because we know you. Talk to you soon.